Today, we will be starting a series on mental health and the Christian faith. Many of us either struggle or know of someone that is struggling with mental health issues. As we start this series, know that as a pastor and minister, I am not a counselor and I'm not authorized to treat or counsel anyone dealing with mental health issues. The series is simply to give you spiritual and practical tools to be able to navigate mental health and to shed some light on this topic as Christians. As we look at this sensitive topic, I will be talking about my own personal story and struggles with mental health and faith in hopes that it will shed some light on your own life and minister to you and your loved ones. I'll be honest, some of my story is of a sensitive nature, so if at some point you feel like you need to stop or pause this video, please do so. Know that this is a judgment-free zone and a safe place, and if you identify with some of the issues that we talk about in the series, please feel free to reach out to us. We wanna connect with you and connect you to resources and scripture during this time. Let's begin. Hey guys, today we're gonna to be starting our new series on mental health and the Christian faith. So what are we talking about when we say the term mental health? Mental health includes our emotions, the way we think, act, and process information. Anything from depression to anxiety to addiction it affects the kind of choices that we make, the way that we relate to those people around us, and even the way that we handle stress. There are a lot of things that can actually promote mental health problems in someone. Some of the most common ones are things like biological factors, that, such as genes and brain chemistry and chemical imbalances, things like life experiences, such as trauma or abuse or grief family history of mental health problems, these things can alter the way that somebody thinks, acts, and processes information in their own mind. That's why it's so important that we raise awareness about mental health issues and how we can navigate these things even in our Christian faith. So today we're going to begin tackling this topic by talking about our purpose and answering the question, why am I alive? Now before I get into my own personal story about depression, abuse, and suicide, please check out this video. Today we're talking about mental health issues, and by mental health issues it can be anywhere from depression to anxiety to any other mental disorders that you may or may not be dealing with. All of us, at some place in our life, were affected by mental health disorders, whether it's personally in our lives or in somebody else's life of an individual that we know and love. Today I really want to talk to you about purpose. Why am I here? And that's a big question that a lot of people struggle with, and even more so if you're struggling with mental health disorders. Why am I here? What's my purpose on this earth? And do I even have a purpose while I'm struggling? Many of us think that we have to wait until our mental health disorders are taken care of before we can even step into the purpose of God. And I'm here to tell you there's nothing that couldn't be further from the truth. God's purpose and plan in your life, if you are in relationship with Him, is in play right now regardless of what you struggle with. See, many times we put our life on pause so we can work our own lives out or we can help an ind another individual in our life work out their problems and work through their mental health disorders. Here's the thing, we cannot slow down when it comes to the purpose and the plan of God. God still called you, still, God still gave you a purpose, even knowing that you would be walking through the things that you're walking through today. And he still found it suitable to give you that calling. That means you can fulfill it. That means you can step into it and that can happen today. Never believe the lie that there's not a purpose for you to accomplish. Never believe the lie that there's not a destiny and a plan that you can't live for. God has a purpose and a plan for your life today, and you have the opportunity to step into it. Considering that there's very few people that are untouched by the impact of mental health issues, it's crazy to think that as people deal with mental health issues, it can create a feeling of isolation or feelings of loneliness that we're alone in our struggles. But it's interesting, 26% of Gen Z has actually experienced both increased anxiety and depression during this pandemic. 35% of Gen Z report actually increased feelings of loneliness since the beginning of this outbreak. What that tells us is that you are not alone in your struggle. Just as we saw in the video, our purpose doesn't get paused because we're dealing with mental health issues. Sometimes we feel like we have to get away from God for a moment or step down off the cross for a little bit whenever we're dealing with these heavy issues. But can I tell you that God is still at work in you in this season. This was not a surprise to him. And despite everything that we deal with, he still chose to call you to do his will. When I came to know Jesus, this was one of the most life-changing realities that I faced. That God would choose me and have a purpose for me and value me and love me. I came to know the Lord whenever I was a teenager, but before I came to know Him, there were so many things that I dealt with. There was isolation and loneliness. I had this overwhelming feeling that I was unseen 
invisible and it literally led into a journey of doing whatever it took to be noticed or to be valued or affirmed. I went into some very unhealthy decisions of my life. It led me on a journey of things like substance abuse where I walk through what it feels like to, to have an addiction to not just drugs and alcohol, but to have an addiction to the lifestyle of searching out your own value and things that this world provides. This substance abuse then also led to physical abuse where I tolerated being viewed as an object or, or someone to be played with through relationships and friendships. You know, this led to emotional abuse where I was willing to accept the lies that people told me or the things that people said about me. You know, it's crazy to think now how this whole time I was trying to get away from things like depression and loneliness and isolation by going into things like substance and physical abuse when those things could not numb the things that I was feeling, that they could not um, confront the things that I was dealing with. In fact, if anything, abuse created a more avenue for, for me to go deeper into depression or deeper into loneliness. You know, a lot of the times that's what we do. We seek things out to numb the pain or seek things out to get a result. But the reality is abuse will never be something that fills you, will never be something that fuels you, will never be something that replaces those voids in our lives, those feelings that we're searching to be loved and, and valued and shown affection to. Unfortunately, this lifestyle created a downward spiral where I still felt as empty and lonely as I was at the very beginning. I realized that these things were not the things that I was looking for. And this led to feelings that maybe if I truly felt invisible, then maybe I was invisible. And if I was invisible, then what would it matter if I was alive or if I existed? If you've ever been in that place, can I tell you that God has a purpose for you? God has a purpose for you far beyond what you can ever understand. Far beyond anything that you could ever imagine. His dreams for your life are so much bigger than this present struggle or moment. And that season of my life, I could not begin to even grasp how far the plan of God would come in my life. How far I would be able to reach people with the story of my life. I couldn't imagine a God that would literally lay his life down for me and love me and choose me to lead a generation. Can I tell you that same plan of God and purpose is here for you. There's things that you're dealing with in this present moment, but that doesn't pause God's plan for your life. There's a scripture that I want to share with y'all tonight that really changed my life. Psalm 139, 13 through 16, and the video mentioned it. It says, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. I'm so thankful that in the middle of that season, God already had a plan for me. And at the climax of that lifestyle, I got scared of where my life was leading to. I remember being invited to a camp that summer. And in that summer, the speaker was talking about her own journey and how God had brought her through a lifestyle of being abused. She literally said that the names that are put on us by the world and other people, you can take those things off in Jesus. That day I ran to the altar and knelt before him. And as I knelt before him, I heard these very audible words as I felt a hand on my shoulder. And he said, I see you, I know you, you are mine. I have a plan for you. I have always seen you. I have always loved you. Can I tell you that God has always seen you. He has always loved you. He has always had a purpose for you. Whenever we go through things in our lives, it doesn't diminish the purpose and value that God puts on us. In fact, you have purpose and value no matter how you see yourself or what you struggle with. 
God has recorded every single day of your life. That means every single day, not a single one that goes amiss. Every single day of your life has a purpose for it. That means your life has purpose. Your life has value. You, you stand aside from whatever you feel about yourself or how you see yourself. And this goes the same for the ones that in our lives that are dealing with that. God has literally created you so that you will know his love. In Ephesians 2.10, it says, for we are God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ Jesus so that we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. See, God knows us perfectly and completely, yet he declares that you are his masterpiece. You are his masterpiece, no matter how you see yourself or what you struggle with. One of the essential things to be able to do the good things that he has planned for our lives is for us to be able to know Jesus Christ in our lives. Galatians 2.20, my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. That's the reason why his love is so trustworthy because he loved us and gave himself up for us. When you were at your deepest pit. God loves you in that pit. God struggled for you in that pit and gave his life for you so that you would know freedom, so that you would know that he still chooses you, so that you would know that you are a masterpiece of God. In that season of my life, in that brokenness, there were so many times that I believed the lies that other people said of me, that I felt like I needed to do things to earn things like love and value, not understanding that my love and value existed outside of me, that it was because I am a created person of God, because I am a child of God, that I am loved and valued. No one, let me tell you, no one can tell you anything otherwise. You are loved no matter how you see yourself or what you struggle with. Other people's acceptance of who you are or how you look or any sort of affirmation that the world can give you cannot validate you. Jesus who gave himself up for you out of love for you is what validates you. He saw you with all your mess, with all your imperfections, with all your issues and said, I choose you. I want you. I want to do something in you. I have a plan and a purpose for you and nothing you can do in this life could ever take away the plans that God has for you. Let me tell you, young people, there's not a single day that I'm not thankful that God gave me a broken story so that I could look at you in the face and say, there's nothing more life changing than the plan and purpose of God. To think that God can use imperfect, broken people and say, I choose you. I love you. You are my masterpiece. I have a purpose and a plan for you is the most radical portrayal of love that we could ever experience. Why are you alive? to love God and serve this world by reflecting his goodness in your attitudes and in your thoughts and in your actions. See, we exist to be able to tell other people that they are not lost in their pain. And every day we have that purpose. We have that responsibility. God is moving in this season. You're going to look back on this time and season and realize how far God was already planning the things that he was going to do in you and through you. So this is what I want you guys to do. I want you to take a piece of paper out or to open the notes app on your phone. And I want you to write down some of the lies that you've believed about your worth and purpose. What are things that people have spoken over you or lied over your life that have affected your view on your worth and purpose? Maybe it's things like nobody loves me or things like my life has no purpose or I can't do anything right or I'm not a good enough son or daughter or I'm not a good enough friend or I don't do enough or I keep messing up. What are the lies that have affected your worth and purpose? Now, as you write those lies, this is the next step. Go through every single one of those lies and write down what God has said about you. 
things like God loves me and even gave his only son for me, that God has specific things planned out for my life, that Christ lives in me and that he gives me strength and gifting so that I stand apart from anything in this world. And as you write down those realities, as you write down what God has said of you, delete every single lie the enemy try to put over your life are not alone you have people to reach out to it just sometimes takes one step further to say i need help if you or anyone you know is dealing with thoughts of suicide or self-harm please call 1-800-273-TALK please share this video with somebody that needs to hear it or share it on your feed so that someone ha can happen upon it and understand that god has a purpose and a plan for them in this season we love you guys and we'll see you on friday Thank you.